What's up guys, this is Oz Campbell coming back with another video. This video is going to be basically just about uh, my time in Greece and it's going to probably touch on just some of the problems I had while over there. But with this video is basically going to talk about how this is the first time that was the first time not only did I ever go out the country, but that was the first time that I had ever flown. Okay, ever. Before then, um, before the trip I took to Greece, that was um, that was actually the first time that I had ever been on an airplane. Um, I've never traveled on an airplane before, um, let alone been out the country. And so this was one of them. This was this was one of them type of experiences that you almost can't make up because you know um, you know for most people when they decide to travel, you know one of the you know they typically try places in the country first especially when it comes to stuff like flying you know the trip came up um it came up during um I, I wouldn't say a good time but the timing was right for me at least and when I decided to make the trip it ended up being a good trip for me to make and you know I kind of just spurred the moment decided to go and end up happening but with this trip um with this trip this trip was kind of interesting because it was one of them um and i said before this was one of them spur of the moment type trips because i decided on making this trip in basically what was one night basically a friend of mine they brought up the uh trip um they were talking about making it you know it was one of them random out of them you know just random out of the blue trips at least for my sake but it was something that they had been planning for years apparently and you know it was one of them type of people that they travel a lot you know the person this particular person they've been out the country many 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 times and you know this is just one of their bucket list places they wanted to go and when they presented it to me you know it was one of them it was one of them good deal type of trips. It was one of them, you know, you get online, you see certain airplanes, you see certain flights and, you know, they might have their base price, but every now and then you have those one, them, them discounted prices that it's like, you can't really miss out on. Like if you miss out on it, you're going to end up, you know, it's one of them once in a lifetime type of deals. It came up at a right time, at a good time. I ended up making that trip around um, Thanksgiving time, which... Um, again, I might, I might explain in a previous video, my parents, they had, um, you know, they weren't really doing much for Thanksgiving. They were actually going on vacation themselves. So the timing just came up perfectly. And then with that, you know, they told me, they were like, you know, if you want to go, you kind of got to make up your mind within a week. And, <laughs> and I ended up sleeping on it and I decided to go, which the trip, it, that, that itself to me was very crazy. I'm not the kind of person to just do random trips you know it's, um i'm very planned out when it comes to things i like to do and so when i made that trip it was one of them things where i'm just like like alice what are you thinking <laughs> i was like what am i thinking like I, I really wasn't thinking you know i don't even know if i really really slept on it you know i just kind of went to bed woke up and just said all right let's do it and you know it ended up being one of the best experiences that i've ever had and so i'm very thankful that I actually decided to make that trip especially when I didn't even know if I was going to be ready to even travel or even you know be on a plane because you know just with the plane man I was I had so much anxiety just trying to get on this plane just trying to go through that process um you know it, that that was that was tough for me just even getting to the point to even hop on the plane you know it was a tough thing for me um i don't know if it might you know it might not be tough for some of y'all that might be watching this y'all might have traveled a lot but for me that was oh man i i i'm i'm an overthinker you know i you know i'm willing to admit i am an overthinker and when i was planning for that trip man i was planning for every worst possible scenario when it came to being on the plane and so um Fast forward, the plane ride ended up going fine. Um, I think my flight was like, I think total it was like 15 hours, something like that. I ended up flying out of my hometown in Florida or near my hometown, Florida, up into Atlanta. 
that was about an hour and then from Atlanta to it was Amsterdam that was about nine and a half maybe ten hours and then from Amsterdam to Athens Greece was about another three and a half to four hours so you know it was a long flight but you know it was well worth it especially once I got there and you know just to kind of and I'm gonna kind of get into some of my experiences over in Greece especially if you're planning on ever going there if you ever plan on traveling there if you ever plan on you know especially if you're not planning on going with a group you know if I had to give some advice one of my biggest advices I would give if you are a first time traveler if you've never been on a plane if you've never been out the country if you've never been out the state you know for crying you know my biggest advice is just try you know that's and I know that might sound weird I know that might sound bad when you say it like that like oh you just can't my biggest advice would be to just try it you know traveling might be you know traveling ain't for everybody you know it's not for everybody you know just like there's certain food it's not for everybody there's certain you know there's certain tv there's certain tv shows not for everybody comedy ain't ain't for always for everybody you know traveling is the same thing and i think that's going to be the best indicator whether or not it's something that you would like to do in your life you know because it's it, it's just your life and you have the opportunity you have and you're allowed to make whatever decision you want to make and so my biggest advice would be to at the very least try it because i was somebody who man i was I man, I thought I'd never be. I, I, I was like, man, I don't need to fly. I was like, man, I don't need to fly nowhere. I can always drive somewhere. I, I'm a drive. I like to drive. So I was like, I can always just drive somewhere. You know, I'll hop on a boat. But you know, and I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, man, I don't think I'll ever be on a plane for that long. That's too long of a flight, man. I, I just can't do it. You know, I wouldn't say I got the travel bug. You know, what I'm saying just because I'm only taking one trip, but I can't wait to go on my next trip. And so that would be like my first advice is in general just to try it you know just try it you know it's, it's that's kind of the best advice i would give when it comes to doing a trip like this the second advice i would give especially when it comes to greece is understand your transportation options and this can, and this will probably apply to any anywhere you go you know in the states out the country is really understand your travel options. You know, especially if you do plan on going to Greece. Because when I was in when I was over there, you know, outside of the mainland where you have Athens and Meteora and you know in other parts, most of Greece is islands. And I remember when I was over there, I think they told me that Greece is made up of like I might, I might have to check this around. I think they told me like over 200 islands or something like that. Like some crazy number. It's like everywhere. Like if there's islands everywhere. You know, you have the main islands. Like, you know, you have like your Mykonos and your Santorini and so forth. But I heard that they told me that it was a lot of different smaller islands all throughout the country. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to travel when it comes to being in Greece. I flew on a plane a couple of times. I took ferries to some of the islands. Um, when it came to going in the mainland, I took I took the ferry a couple. I mean, not the ferry. I took the uh, the subway a lot of times. I took a train, and so there's a lot of ways to get around. And understanding your travel situation, that might be probably the the most important thing, or it's one it's one of the most important things that you need to really figure out. You know, once you get there. Because one of the things I actually almost messed up on when it came to traveling is just getting from island to island. So when you're in Greece, there's a couple ways you can get from island to island. Now, you can, you can take a plane to some of the islands, but the most popular way to get from island to island is to take a ferry. And over there, they had a couple of brands. One of the things that I would say is that, you know, unlike the other forms of transportation, the ferry, and this is what I learned. This is where I almost got messed up. The ferry only comes but so often, especially if you're going during the down season. Because when I went over there, I went during down season. I went again, I went during um, the end of November, beginning of December, which is their down season. And so when I got there, the ferries weren't always going back and forth from island to island each day. And so, for example, which which is kind of a funny story 
I ended up having to stay at another island just because that was going to be the only island that was going to take me to a different island. And so, you know, understanding your travel arrangements is very important so you don't get caught up. So, for example, when I took the ferry over, I, I went I went to go from Athens to Mykonos. That was the first place I wanted to go. So I took the ferry and when I got and then the ferry, the ferry ended up being like five or six hours on the boat. But when I got off the ferry, right, and thank God I did this. I called the hotel that I ended up booking with or the people like the, the hospitality place I ended up booking with. They had a driver that came along with the price. So it came with the price. So I didn't have to really pay anything extra to um, to have a driver. So I didn't have to worry about transportation once I got off the boat. But let's just say I wouldn't. Have. Let's just say the hotel did. not When I got off the boat, you know, most places have taxis, buses, etc. But one of the things I learned is that on a lot of the islands, there's only but so many taxis and there's only but so many buses. And so past a certain time, it's very difficult to actually get in contact with a taxi. I know I think I was at one island and I forgot which island it was, but they told me that the island itself only had 20 taxis total. Okay. Total. And so, you know, if you got off the boat and all 20 taxis were being used, you, I mean, and, and the buses were, were done running. I mean, you, you're just kind of stuck there. And so understanding your transportation is very important when it comes to traveling especially when i was over there in greece and i'm sure it's the same way when it comes to any other country the next advice i would give you when it comes to greece is cash is king and i think we all know this no matter where you go cash is king you know not just literally not just uh figuratively but literally there were places that i went to that did not accept card and it became real quick that, okay, you got to have some form of cash, some form of currency. Uh, you had to have some kind of euros in order, in order to just, you know, just do some of the basic minimum stuff. You know, even when it came to transportation, when it came to taking the taxi, you know, they, they didn't, they don't do cars. It's not like here where, you know, you book an Uber, you know what I'm saying? And it kind of, it can, you can just build it on your car and I think you can just book something like that over there. If you try to hop in a taxi, you know, just like I'm pretty sure some of the taxis in New York City, you got to have you got to have cash. They, they don't take car. They don't take that. And so, you know, you know, I, I wouldn't even say funny story, man. There was one time that actually the time when I was actually trying to leave Athens for Mykonos, I took the taxi. He drove me all through the city. He got me all the way down to the port. And when I was ready to pay, he told me. Oh, I don't take, uh, I don't take card and I didn't have cash on. Me. So the thing that he ended up doing is he told me he basically, I had to, he locked my luggage in the trunk. Okay. He wouldn't open the trunk. And he said, fine. He said, basically, I'm not unlocking this until you get me my cash. <laughs> And to put to make matters worse, the ferry was about to leave in like 20 minutes <laughs> and there were no ATMs around. <laughs> so I ended up having to leave the port. I had to walk inside like the little city that's like right by the port. You know, cut a corner, take a left, take a right, take another left. I had to find an ATM just to get money out. And then I had to run back to the guy at the taxi just to hand him the cash just to get my bags out in the trunk that was like one of the most stressful things i ever had happen to me especially because i thought i was going to miss the boat i had already checked out of my hotel i had nowhere else to go and so and i'm in a city where you can't understand that on top of that it's in the afternoon so there's stuff closing at that point so you know you know, I'm not saying you got to have and I'm not saying you're supposed to carry a lot of cash because I don't carry a lot of cash, but you it, you want to have something, you know, no matter what country you're in, figure out their currency. Most of these countries, you can part, you can pretty much get their currency at the ATM once you get off the airport. And, you know, that would be my best. That would be my next. That that would be the advice I would give when you, when you first touch down in that country is somehow 
some way get their currency, get something. And, you know, you might not touch it. You know, if you don't have to touch it, don't touch it. But have something as a backup because you never know. Just like in this country, you never know. Over there, you never know. I had what's called an international debit card, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about that next. Um, you know, no matter where you go, cash is king. Cash is always king, will forever be king. Obviously, you know, one thing that you can do, and actually this is going to be kind of an added on advice to kind of go with this cash thing. If you, you know, when you go, when you travel, wherever you tra plan on traveling to, make sure whatever bank you use, whether, you know, whatever bank you use, you know, make sure you call your bank in advance and tell them you're going out the country because if not you might end up having problems with that you know one of the problems i end up actually um i end up having and this actually happened the first day and thank god i actually had the international um debit card but when i had touched down in amsterdam that was like that was like my layover flight i ended up we went from atlanta to amsterdam and then from amsterdam to uh athens uh greece but when i touched down in amsterdam at the Amsterdam airport, right? I went to go make a purchase at like a, like this um, like little souvenir shop. And when I went to swipe my card, it declined. And, you know, you know, obviously before the trip, I obviously made sure I had money in my account. So I, mean, I knew everything was there. I knew I had money. I was like, well, why did, it, why did it decline? And, you know, I didn't really want to waste no time. So I just went ahead and just bought it with the international debit card, except it got accepted and everything. Once I actually got to Greece, and I knew that the bank was open. I ended up making a phone call, right? I had to do the whole, you know, the exchange, dial out, whatever, to, to, you know, to get to America. But I dialed and called the bank. And basically what happened was they froze my account because they thought that it was a fake account. They thought somebody was trying to hack my account. And the reason why they thought it was somebody trying to hack it is because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm from the United States, I'm from Florida. And then all of a sudden a purchase, you know, you know, you make all of a sudden, you know, you make a purchase in Atlanta and then all of a sudden you got a purchase in Amsterdam, you know, that, that, that you know, it kind of makes sense. It makes sense why they would all of a sudden just freeze the account. And so, you know, if I didn't have the international debit card, you know, I ended up having to wait a time. I had to wait a while before I can actually get a hold of that bank. But if I didn't have that international debit card, man, I would have been out of luck. But no matter what bank you use, call them in advance and let them know because what they end up doing is they put pretty much like a travel I'm not sure what it's called but it's like a travel alert it basically lets them know that you're going out the country you know you call your bank you tell them look i'm between these dates i'm going to be out the country i'm going to be in this particular i'm going to be going from here to here to here um you ain't got to give them all your details but give them enough details so they know what's going on and they put that little travel alert on so basically what it does is when you make those purchases it doesn't all of a sudden freeze your account and so now you're stuck and the, and the last thing you want to do is be in the country with no money first of all the last thing you want to do is be anywhere with no money <laughs> but let alone out the country thousands of miles away that's the last thing you want to do when it comes to travel so piggybacking off of that you know with the international debit card because that's what ended up what i ended up getting an international debit card basically what that is 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 a car it's a card that's basically accepted and you know internationally that's pretty much the best way to explain it. it's accepted in many many different countries and you know one of the things that it does is it's set up for you to be able to not bypass but basically you end up being able to remove in a way all of your international fees when it comes to certain purchases especially when it comes to taking money out of an atm and you know just like you know you know when you go to any atm they have some kind of they have a fee you know if you want to take a hundred dollars out you know they might have a fee of you know however the amount right but it's not really that much but when you go out the country what starts to happen is you start having these weird fees these almost you know when you're trying to convert so for example you put in your debit card and you know you're trying to go from us to euros you start it depending on the atm you start having these weird fees that would be not only forget double or triple you know 
I was having fees. I was going to ATMs and taking out maybe like 100 euros. And I was having fees of like 60 euros, $70, $80. Like these wild fees that they would take off of just like 100 euros, like just off of a 100 euro deposit. What the international debit card does, for one of the things it does, it does a lot of things. You probably kind of have to just look it up. Um, the one I end up using, I end up using a company called Charles Swa, which I think they're with Chase. But basically, what it, what one of the perks that having that was is whenever I would get a fee. So, for example, if I took, um, if I took, let's just say, 60 euros out, but the fee was like 40, like 40 dollars, right? Given a certain amount of time. It would, the bank, basically, they would give me my $40 back. And that's because that international debit card is set up to handle all of those international transactions. And so, you know, my advice would be to invest in an international debit card just to save you those little problems. Because the last thing you want to do is be, is trying to take a little bit of money out. You know, you, you think that you've only taken out $400 dollars throughout the however many weeks you've been there. And then you look up and it says that you've taken out $700 and, and, and three, you know what I'm saying? And that's just because, and that's just because of fees alone. On top of that, the reason why you want to really invest in an international debit card is so with that, with that, you also don't have to worry about the problems of being scammed. You know, thinking on, thinking back on it, Some of them ATMs might have even been rigged. You know, some of them might have been rigged because, you I mean, I was looking at ATMs that had fees that were like, they were like the same amount as the amount you were trying to take out. So if you were trying to take out 50 euro, but it had a fee of $50, it's like, you know, there's something wrong with that. And on top of that, the one thing you don't want to do is be in a foreign country. You swipe your card at a store, a restaurant, or whatever, and then they charge you more than what you actually wanted to pay and then on top of that you can't read the language so you don't even you might not even realize it you know until you leave and the international debit card what it does is it kind of it catches that and it it can almost basically they basically they can refund you your money back but you know i don't you know i don't know a lot about it because i just got the card not that long ago but my advice is look into an international debit card the next advice i would probably give is And this became a problem when I got there. And I didn't realize how big of a problem this was going to be. But make sure that you have your internet and your Wi-Fi. Make sure that's set up before you go. Because when I got over there, see, what I ended up doing is I'm with Verizon. So when I went over there, before I left, I had got like a plan. It was like this little mobile hotspot thing with Verizon. And basically what was supposed to happen was when I got over there, when I got over there, I was supposed to be able to have that mobile hotspot, but it was supposed to be able to just turn it on and boom, I got Wi-Fi anywhere I go. But I got all the way over there and not trying to, not trying to call them out, but it didn't work. And since it didn't work, that was the first issue that I ended up having once I got over there. And it became a big issue was that. You know, I didn't have any internet unless I was basically at a place. And what I mean by that is, you know, I had internet obviously at like the hotel, but, you know, certain restaurants. But as far as that, you know, you didn't have anything, you know, you didn't have like there is no 4G or 3G. Or, there's none of that, you know, you it was just a blank. And so when I got over there, you know, the only time I could ever get on Wi-Fi, make a phone call use gps anything i had to go inside of a building usually purchase something or even at a restaurant you have to buy something first and then you got your wi-fi and then from that point then you're able to basically look up whatever you need to look up you're able to google whatever you need to google you're able to set up your uh gps and everything which you know some people might think oh that's a good thing not to have any wi-fi and it is a good thing because it, it allowed me to really enjoy the experience be able to talk to people that's that that is where it became a good thing but where it started to become a bad thing was like late at night if for example let's just say i was leaving somewhere late at night i'm leaving a restaurant and maybe i didn't know my way maybe there was no taxis and i decided to walk it became a problem quickly because now you have to you basically had to 
speak to people and kind of, you know, you had to basically be in a very uncomfortable spot, especially as a tourist, not knowing anybody and not being able to read the signs, read the road and being able to navigate through that. And so that became a problem very, very, very quickly, just not having Wi-Fi. And so my best advice would be to get some form of mobile Wi-Fi hotspot and get one, you know, I wouldn't skimp on this, get one that works in multiple different countries, get one that works um, with many different devices. And then what you would normally do, and then what basically I think what you would end up doing is once you have the mobile hotspot, once you get to the country that you're at, then all you have to do is then just get a SIM card with whatever phone provider they have. And you want to get a hotspot that's unlocked. I and mean, the reason why you want to get it unlocked is because of that reason. So when you get there, you can just go to whatever phone company they have and you can just get the uh, the SIM card, place it into the uh, into the device. And then, boom, now you have hotspot. You just pay whatever the fee is, whatever their data plan is. And you know, now you have Wi-Fi that entire time. You have a mobile hotspot and then you just keep it charged. And, you know, and now you're good to go while you're at whatever place you're at. And that's something that you're definitely going to need. You, I didn't realize how much I needed Wi-Fi until I needed Wi-Fi. So just saying. The next thing I'm going to probably, the next thing I would probably say is pack light. And I know that might be very difficult, especially when it comes to traveling out the country. But, you know, for me, packing light ended up helping me a lot when it came to maneuvering in and out of place because you know unlike you know it's not like going to you know i mean obviously unless you go to like a tropical island or something like that where you need all this luggage and you know you're gonna have it in the room you're gonna spend a lot of time in this one spot then yes having you know it's okay to bring you know however much luggage you need to bring but in my case where i was going from place to place to place to place where, you know, you might hop on a ferry and then go from Mykonos to Santorini, then to Cyros, then to Tinos, and then to back to Athens or wherever you may go. You know, you needed, you know, you were going to, you needed some form of light way to travel. Otherwise, it would have been, you would have had a very difficult time just trying to get your stuff from the hotel to a place there to even get you know, to, to the, uh, to whatever, um, port to be able to, you know, basically be able to hop on whatever ferry that you're going to take, you know, because, you know, you're not just able to just go to a taxi, you know, you're not just able to get to a taxi, just right outside your door. Sometimes you have to go, you have to walk a couple blocks to just to get and find the taxi. And, you know, I only had two bags and even those two bags, I just had a luggage and like a duffel bag. Right. And then I ended up having just kind of like a little day pack, but even just carrying that stuff became very difficult going from place to place to place. And so my thing is, if you can try to pack light, you know, you can always get some stuff. You know, I know that's I know that I know that's expensive, but, you know, you're better off and this might sound crazy, but you're better off buying some cheap T-shirts once you get to the country than trying to pack a bunch of bags full of t-shirts you already own. Like I, 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 when it came to like clothing, I didn't even buy certain clothing. Like I packed my jeans, I packed my shoes, you know, and even with shoes, I only took two pair of shoes. And so I, you know, I kind of had some day walking shoes, some, you know, some comfortable shoes just in case, you know, like some stylish, like some lightweight stylish boots just in case I went out that night. And then like some, you know, like some slides or something like that at nighttime. But that was all, that was everything I had when it came to shoes. And then when it came to clothes, you know, I had, um, I packed jeans and that. Cause that's something, you you know, jeans, is one, I would say pack more jeans than anything else, because that's like the thing that you can't really, you know what I'm saying? You don't really want to try to figure that part out in other places. But outside of jeans, man, I just have however many shirts I had, I rolled them. And when it came to t-shirts, I just kind of got a pack of t-shirts when I got there. And then that kind of just held me through the trip. And then guess what? I left the t-shirts. I didn't even take them with me. You know, same thing when it came to stuff like, um, you know, when it came to stuff like socks, I mean, you don't have to have no fancy socks to be out there. And so that's just, and, and maybe this is just for me, you know, it might not work for you, it might not work for other people, but for me, my advice would be if you're going out the country, especially if this is your first time going out the country, my best advice would be to pack light, pack as light as you can. 
you know, so you can be able to maneuver and get around wherever you need to get around. And plus, and, then, and then if you need to get more stuff, you just get some more stuff. I mean, so that, that would be my advice. The next thing I would say is, and this is one that you really need to pay attention to. It's be alert of your surroundings because, you know, even though we are welcomed in other countries, they do real, they do recognize that, you know, we're not liked. We might be welcome, but that don't mean we're liked. And so, you know, I spoke to, you know, luckily I was able to speak to people in other, in some of the um, cities I went to, I ended up speaking to some of the people, to some of the natives and, you know, you know, some of them respected us, you know, a lot of them, most of them respected us, but some of them didn't like us. And, you know, it became evident in certain places. And that might be the case in a lot of parts of the world. And so if you're going to be traveling like that, you want to be aware of your surroundings because, you know, there were there were times where you would notice people looking at you, watching. You, you know, you would notice, you know, there were times where you, you know, what I'm saying you notice a person kind of just looking at and following you and. You know, and, and, and this is as a, you know, as a guy, it was, I was nervous. So I can, I can just imagine for anybody else, you know, and I'm a bigger dude. So, you know, you know, anything can happen to anybody. And so my best advice is to be out of sight, out of mind. Um, I wouldn't wear, you know, I, like I have, I usually wear a lot of jewelry. Well, not a lot of jewelry, but I like to wear my gold necklaces and watches and stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that. Um, actually when I was actually on the island of Mykonos, I remember one of the, um, I remember one of the natives had told me that a guy had got his like watch stole. He had like a Rolex on and, you know, somebody basically stole it off his wrist while he was on vacation. So, and I'm not saying not to wear nice things, but if you can, especially if this is your first time going to this country, I, my advice would be to stay out of sight, out of mind, be safe, pay attention to your surroundings, look both, you know, make sure that you, um, you know, just, just, just staying aware, you know what I'm saying? You know, I did drink when I was, when I was at the island, I did drink when I was on the islands, when I was in the country, but, you know, I stayed, you know, I, I was able to stay and I was sober enough where I understood where I was at and I understood what was going on. So, Again, my best advice, and this is, man, really, 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 really just be safe and pay attention to your surroundings. Let's see. This one kind of goes with what I just said with the whole be safe and be pay attention to surroundings. Also, pay attention to the rules of the country. And, you know, that's something that you really need to understand is this is not America. This is not United States. Other places have different rules, different customs. They look at things a little bit differently. Understand where you're at. Understand that you're not at home. And that's something very important that you need to pay attention to because, you know, sometimes, you know, certain countries, you know, they don't have the same. Um, they don't look at freedom. They don't look at certain things the same way that we might. And I'm not saying that this is Greece, but I'm saying in general, really understand the laws that you're at, that you're, you know, whatever country you're going into. Because, you know, just thinking about for myself, you know, when I got there, you know, even with just the COVID policies, when I got there, you know, here in the United States, right, you know, as of now, you know, the, the COVID policies are a little bit more lax. And then even when I went in November, even when the Omicron variant came, it was still kind of lax. But when I got to Greece, man, they, you weren't getting inside the building unless you had that vaccine card. You know, they weren't letting you inside, they weren't letting you inside any building. You know, whether it was a pop-up shop, whether it was a restaurant, you know, they weren't letting you anywhere near these places. Like you had to have a vaccine card to show. And even then, I remember the first time I tried to show my, some of the places, you know, I tried to show my vaccine card they didn't even want to accept it because I guess over there, they have like a like a barcode that you scan. And I remember when I was like, I showed them just my vaccine card. And they were just like, oh, no, 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 that don't work. I'm like, you know, and I had to explain to them that America don't even do the barcode thing, at least not that I know of. And so understanding the rules and the laws of where you at, man, that's that's going to move you way. That's going to move you a lot farther. That's going to be the probably the biggest thing to keep you safe 
when it comes to being in these other countries is just knowing how to move knowing what you can and cannot do because you know in certain countries you know you can't wear certain things you can't say certain things you know you know even out you know here in the united states you know we protest you know we do certain things you know in certain countries you can't do all you can't be protesting in certain certain countries you can get in trouble for that type of stuff so just understanding the laws understanding where you at you know because i saw man i saw a couple of americans who if i'm being honest were kind of embarrassing you know when it came to our country you know there were certain americans that tried to you know almost like insert the american way into some of the things and it's like you know and and man those people they weren't having it and you can tell some of them were getting upset with those people and so it's like you know you really have to understand where you at and so that would probably be my next advice is just really know the laws, know the know the rules, know the customs, pay attention. You know, just remember, you're not at home. That's the best way to look at it. You're not at home. This is not America. So kind of just keep that in mind when it comes to wherever you plan on going to. Let's see. So with that, um, um, obviously, I probably have a lot more tips to give. But for right now, that's just kind of the kind of tips I'm kind of thinking of just off the top of my head. Um, I might make another video, you know, just kind of talking about the trip um, because, I mean, it, a lot happened on the trip. And so, you know, I have a lot of experience. A lot of things happened. I was there for two and a half, almost three weeks. And so that's the end of the video. And I hopefully I'll see you next time. Peace.